Truth is essential in every transaction. Do you agree? You think of all the tr transactions you've had with people. How many times have you been hurt, if we can use that term, from a time when they were dishonest with you? Say in a business dealing or in a husband and wife type situation, a partnership. When they're dishonest, there is a feeling of a feeling that arises within, isn't there? All right. So the first thing I like to do is be truthful with you. And so I want to talk to you about how I know all the things that I'm going to tell you in this session. And how I know is that I've experienced all of these things that I'm going to talk about with you. And I remember them as well. So you'll be able to ask questions as much as you wish, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability, about anything that you desire. Now, if I don't want to ask her a question, there'll often be a reason why behind it, and I'll tell you, and I'll be honest with you. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is that uh, the person I am is actually a person who lived on earth in the first century. And my name is Jesus. And I'm serious. Oh, there's lots of projection from that. <laughs> so what's the feelings that arise? I'm Mary. You're Mary. <laughs> You must be. <laughs> I'm just being honest, that's yeah. what, I don't know whether it was my mind or my soul, but I think you can call yourself Jesus, then I can call myself Mary. Okay, but what if I am Jesus? See, so there's three possibilities here, isn't there? One possibility is that I think I'm Jesus and I'm a nutcase. <laughs> that's a possibility, isn't it? That's the one mostly in all of your minds, right? <laughs> the next possibility is that I think that I'm Jesus and I'm deceitful. That's not so good, huh? And then the third possibility is I am Jesus. And that's the choice that you're going to have to make at some time in our discussion, perhaps. But in the end, I'm telling you that the reason why I can say what's coming, the next set of things I want to talk to you about, is because I've experienced them and I am that person. Oh, it's, it's just feel the feelings. Really. <laughs> Honestly. Um, could it be that there is like a, a sense of self that the people who are part of that energy that is called Jesus and you have that vibration that is called that. Are you saying specifically that, that that is in this form right now exclusively was what is called Jesus? I'm saying the second. There are lots of people say that with Peter Patra. And I'm I agree. Well There's actually about probably a, 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 probably a million or so people who think they're Jesus, right? And most of them are in asylums. <laughs> I agree with that too. But one of us has to be. Oh, there are literally heaps of people named Jesus. In fact, right now in, in, in Brazil, there are literally hundreds of thousands of people named Jesus. So, uh, so yes, but I'm talking about, I am Yeshua ben Joseph, the son of Joseph and Mary in the first century. So you're saying you are the vibration of that? No, I am the person. I'm not saying I'm the vibration of the person. I'm saying I am the soul of Jesus. I'm a half of a soul, by the way. Sorry? How do you know you are? How do I know I am? You might be like all those other things. <laughs> because I remember everything about my life. <laughs> so do I speak Aramaic? Like, it can be spoken. Can you speak? Not now, I can't, no. Do you remember everything about that time or that age? No, what happens is that as you work through your emotional state, and this is something we will talk about, you may you have memories come back 
as you work through your emotions. So, uh, for example, if you think about your life, how many of you have had some kind of abusive childhood? Is there, I, I know it's a sensitive subject. Um, many of you who have had an abusive childhood would realise that you don't have the memories of that abuse until you're actually prepared to emotionally experience the memory. Does that make sense? And this is the same with every... There are actually 14 people who have returned from, from heaven, if you could call it that, and we'll talk about where it is actually from. And every one of those is going through a process of recovery of memories using that technique. Isn't language quite fundamental? The majority of my life I never spoke a language. So you're, you're thinking that the majority of my life happened in the first century. The majority of life, my life's happened from the first century till now. And all of that time that I was in the spirit world, I didn't speak a language. Did you remember the memories under your own three bodies? Yes. So you haven't had other past lives no. to this one. So you've gone from Jesus to this one. Yes. That would be a big shock. It was. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about why too. How did you know you were? Sorry. And how did you know you were? Because I have, have all the memories of my life. How do you know you are? What's your name? Jill. Jill. How do you know you're Jill? My mother and father told me. Okay. <laughs> my mother and father told me I was Jesus. So yeah. And I have all the memories of that of that life. Not, not them all, of course, because just like you can't remember all of your life right now, obviously there are certain emotions tied up with the experience of all of the memories. Are they specific to the ones that we've seen in the Bible, or is it the accurate? Yeah, no, the Bible is not an accurate account of my life. And there are some things that occurred in the Bible that are accurate as to what happened in my life. As I have memories myself of my past, I can actually yeah. 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 Now I had to say that because the next set of things that I'm going to talk about are things that I've experienced. And I want primarily, like, it does not matter to me who you believe I am. What, but what I would like to do in particular is help you connect with God. Yeah. 